Are you looking into making beats and getting into the MPC workflow? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a beat using MPC beats. Check it out. Hey, my name is Matthew with MatthewCreating.com. On this channel, I bring you the best tips and tools on creating music. If you're new here, consider subscribing. So Akai Professional has just released some new software called MPC Beats. I think this is a great opportunity for anybody that wants to get into the MPC workflow. All right, so this software is based on the MPC workflow and you get eight different MIDI slash instrument tracks to work with as well as two stereo audio tracks. So you get a lot to work with to start out with and it also comes with the three MPC plugins. It comes with Bassline, tube synth and electric and you also get over 80 effects that you could actually use you know when you're making your beats which is a nice inclusion in addition to that you know it comes with its own sound library so you get demos you get templates you get loops and samples to work with so you know you get enough to get you started into making beats okay so in this video i'm going to try to give you like a basic overview of how you can make a beat. I'm not gonna cover everything about the NPC beat software because there's a lot to it. It is very powerful software, but I will get you, you know, kind of acquainted with the NPC workflow and how you can actually get started making a beat. Let's get into it. In this example, I'm using my Akai Professional LPD-8 wireless. This is a MIDI controller, and even though it's called wireless, I'm using it as a USB MIDI controller. So the USB cable is going into my computer, and this way the software is going to pick it up. And I'm using my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 as an audio interface, and this way I get low latency, and I'm able to actually hear what I'm actually playing. I'm going to use my headphones here. Now I will leave show notes in the description of this video, so make sure you do go into the description and check the show notes. I will di leave different links and stuff about what I'm talking about, but let's go ahead and get into this beat. So I already have the software installed. I'm just going to open it up here. So whenever you open the MPC Beat software, you do get this startup screen. So you could do an empty project or choose a template. There are several templates here. Okay, and then you have demos here. So if you wanna get an idea of what it can actually do, you can load up a demo. All right, and then your recent projects will show up down here. So what I'm gonna do is load up basic. So I'm gonna load this up. You can load this up too if you do wanna follow along. Um, you know, maybe you wanna have like your phone next to you and you know, have this on your computer. You could follow along if you do want to because I wanna use all the sounds and everything that come with it. So I'm just gonna open up the basic right here. I'm gonna double click that. Now when that does load up, you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here. And it's really more simple than it looks, but at the same time, it is quite deep. There's a lot you can do with the NPC beats, but I wanna to try to show you a couple things to keep it streamlined and simple. So when you're first starting out, you can kind of follow along with this. So up at the top, you have your different modes. This right here where there's a house is your main mode. If you hit control one, it's gonna take you back to this mode. And then you got different modes over here. All right, you got track view, you got program edit. So right here's program edit, and it does have a sampler. So you can use sample edit and make chops and different things like that. And then you have your mixer. So this is your pad mixer, and then you got your channel mixer. You know, you got your sampler here, and then you got your looper and all the different things that the NPC does come with. Okay, and then all your menu here. You got song mode and everything like that. I'm not gonna go over all these different modes and what they do. I just wanna show you how to make a beat. Let's get started making beats, okay? Now, before we get into this, I will make a setup video as well. I will leave that in the description. So if you do wanna check that out, you can check that out. But what I wanna show you now is kind of the workflow in here. So you look right here, you have something that says MIDI. So this is where your eight MIDI tracks are gonna be. Over here, it says audio. So this is where your two audio tracks are gonna be. So you'll see Right here, this template does have one, two, three, four MIDI tracks. And then down here are audio tracks. They're kind of separated. And they already named everything for you. So you got drums, keys, synth pad, bass, and vocals in this template. Now, all right, so under here where it says MIDI, you do have something that says sequence, okay? Now you can kind of minimize these things if you want to, but let's go ahead and just keep them open. All right, so up here is your sequences. And then you have your number of bars in your sequence here. So right now it's on two. And then right here is loop. So if you have this 
highlighted, it's actually going to loop that sequence over and over when you hit play. Okay. If you take it off loop, it's only going to play that sequence once. All right, let's keep it on. Now you can go through your sequences. You can have a ton of sequence. So if you go through here, you can actually see how many sequences you can have, which is 128. Okay. Now underneath that, you have your tracks. So you can have eight different MIDI tracks. Now we can select our tracks by tapping that arrow and going through. So you got drums, keys, synth pad, bass, and then unused. So you, we have the option to add up to three more tracks on this one. Down here we have programs. So what your programs are is your programs basically contain your sounds. All right. So in short, they contain your sounds. All right. It goes a little deeper than that because there are different types of programs. But this first one right here is a drum program. So this is actually going to contain your samples. So this is going to contain your drum samples. Now, right here, you know, it says drums, and then you got your key groups, you got plugins, you got MIDI programs, you got clip programs and CV. All right, we're not going to worry about a lot of these other ones right now. We're just going to focus on drum programs and plugin programs for this particular tutorial. Now, at any point in time, you can add new programs by pressing that plus, but this is the program that's selected. Okay, and you can play this program with your pads. So let's go back to main. So you make sure you're in main here. And then you can play that program with your pads. Now underneath program, we have insert effects. So this channel here on the left is your program channel for this particular program. And we have four insert effects that we can add to each program. So you could do that right there. And right here, these are your synth effects. So I believe by default, this one's gonna have a reverb. So let's turn this up. Now let's hit the pads. You can hear there's a reverb. All right, we could take that off. We got our dry signal again. Now we have four different synths that we can use. Underneath that, we can select a program here. Okay, and then underneath that, we have our output. So. This particular program is going to output one and two. Underneath that, we have mute and solo. So if you mute this, you're not going to be able to hear anything. All right, if I unmute it, we can hear it. Now, if you solo it, you're only going to be able to hear that. Okay, now over here, this is your write and read automation. When it's on R, it's going to read any automation. And automation is just like you can program the parameters in here to be automated to automatically do certain things. We're not going to cover that too much in this particular video, but under here we have our pan. So we could pan things to the left or the right, or we could simply undo that by pressing control Z. And right here we do have our program volume. So right now it's on zero DB and we can change it a few different ways. We can actually click it and move this slider up and down. We can move this particular Q link right here. So this area are your cue links. We can actually change the program level. You can see where it says program level. We could change the program level here, or we can actually use the knob on our controller. So I'm going to turn the knob on the controller and you can see I'm actually changing the level of that program. And then again, I can use my mouse here or over here. Okay. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. All right, so that's your channel strip section. So that whole section is your channel strip. Now to the right of that, is, this is gonna change depending on where you're at. So right now it's on output one and two, and any insert effects on your outputs are right here. Okay, so if you click that effect, this is gonna be all the parameters that control that effect. There's a bunch of other stuff at the top here. Right here, we got our metronome. You could turn this on or off here. We could change the volume of it here. Okay, we have our time correct here. So now the time correct is on. You can see it says timing correct. Right here we have our bar and then our beat and our tick. So this indicates where our playhead here, right here, there's a playhead. So if I click over here, I can change where the playhead is. So if I click this kind of blue area at the top here, green, blue, whatever color that is, I can change where that playhead is. So you can see I'm changing it there. All right, now over here, we have our BPM, so that's how fast it is. So I'm going to slow it down. We can do it by clicking it or in dragging our mouse, or we could just tap or double click. All right, and then we could type it in. So I changed it to 90. All right, and then we have over here kind of where we can actually control our playback. We can hit record here, overdub here. All right, and then we have our retrospective record here, our punch in and out, stop, 
play, and play start. So the most common things you're probably going to use is overdub and play start. Now, if you look, Spacebar does actually start it for you. Now, if you hover over some of these things, it's going to give you like what it actually is. So if I hover over that, it says record. It also gives me a shortcut. So R is going to arm for record. You can see I pressed armed and now it's arm for record. And then shift R is going to give me overdub. Okay. So these might be useful for you if you're going to be using your keyboard. Stop is stop, which is going to be space bar. And play is shift space bar and then play start is just space bar. So if I hit space bar, it's going to stop, start the playing. But whenever it starts it, you don't hear anything. That's because we actually have to program something inside of here. So if you look at this big section here, this is our grid. You can see it says grid right here. Then we got wave, wave and list. We're worried about our grid right now because we want to get something in our grid so we can hear something. So if you look at the grid, we can actually double click in there and start programming things. So you could do that very simply. All right, now if I hit spacebar, we do have something programmed. So that's one way to program, all right? I can program a whole drum beat in there by just clicking in there if I really wanted to. Now there's gonna be different ways you could do things, but this is just one way to do it, okay? Now you saw that. All right, and if I don't want these events in here, anything I double tap in here is called an event, by the way. So if I don't want one of these MIDI events, I could double tap it and delete it, or I could tap it or click it, I should say, and then press delete and delete it that way. Now, if I want to delete multiple things, I can select multiple events and then press delete. Okay. Okay. So now we're back to a clean slate. All right. Now down here, we do have some different modifiers in our velocity. All right. Cover that later on, maybe in a different video, but right now, Let's get a beat going. So let's use our pad. So I, I do recommend having some kind of controller, some kind of USB MIDI controller that you can control. And you can hear it's very easy to play when you have an audio interface. Now I do have an audio interface that has an ASIO driver. All right, so the latency or the delay between when I hit the pad and hear it is very minimal. If you do not have an audio interface, download ASIO for all. Okay, and then that's gonna help you out. All right, so let's go ahead and get something in here. All right, we can use our pads and hear the different sounds. And I always say, when you're working with drums, if you can sing it, you can play it. So if I want something that's like boom, ta, boom, boom, ta, you know, I could be able to do that, you know, boom, ta, boom, boom, ta. All right, so that's one simple method of kind of coming up with a drum beat. One good thing to do is turn your metronome on. So let's go ahead and put the metronome on. So right here, I wanna click where it says metronome, or you could actually push Shift and M to start that. But it's on now, so when I hit spacebar, you're gonna hear the metronome. Okay, now it's gonna give you something to play to. So. Okay, I have something to play to. All right, now what I do want to do is use my Q links to kind of zoom back out. So now I'm using my controller to control the Q link. So this Q link right here, this is the fourth Q link, actually controls your zoom. So if you pull it all the way down, you're going to get the entire picture right there. All right, so let's record something. I got the metronome on. I'm going to push um, Shift R, and that's going to arm the overdub. And then when I hit space bar, you're going to hear a count in and I'm going to be able to record. I'm just going to record that into it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Two, three, four. All right. So I'm going to actually turn overdub off by clicking it. And I'm going to turn the metronome off by clicking it. Then you could start freestyling the drums over top of it. All right. I want to hit um, overdub up here. All right. I want to take overdub off.
All right, I put Overdub on just for a second so I can record that one MIDI event. All right, so we got a drum beat in there. Remember, I'm just using the template here, so you could follow along with this if you want to. All right, so if I hit spacebar, you're going to be able to hear that drum beat. All right, so what I'm going to do now is actually go to a different track. So there's a few ways we can do that. We can actually click over here, all right, where it says tracks. So we got all of our different tracks here, so we can select a different one. I'm going to select keys. All right, so that's one way we can change the tracks. Another way is down here where it says tracks. You can see it says track right there, all right, and it says current track. So we can actually go through the different tracks, okay? Let's go ahead and go back to keys. So we're on keys right there. So we got a drum beat in there. Let's hear what the keys sound like. All right, so we can play one note at a time. multiple notes at a time. All right, and we can also use pad perform. All right, now if you look down here, we got our cue links, we got our pads, and then right here it says pad perform. All right, so under where it says pad perform, we can actually change this to chords, for example. And then we could change our root note there. We could change our scale, so maybe you wanted a major scale. And then we can actually, right here, change our chord type, okay? So let's just pick this one for the fun of it. All right, so that's what that would sound like. One, three, five sounds like this. All right, and then right here is our octave, so we can actually turn that octave down. All right, and we could pick a different scale. So here's all the different scales. So let's pick natural minor. All right, you could change the root note. All right, now... So if you don't know music theory, don't worry about it too much. Just pick something here and then like kind of stick with it throughout the song as far as right here where it says root note in your scale. Keep the scale the same through the song and you'll be okay. So let's go ahead and keep the root note at C and the scale as natural minor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar and kind of play to this. All right, let's listen to it. All right, so that's not too bad, but let's go ahead and make this um, sequence a little longer. You can see it's two bars here, but if we go over here to the menu, we can go to edit, and then under where it says sequence, what we can actually do is double the length. So you can see where we're at. We're in the menu, edit, sequence, double length. If we click that, what that's going to do is actually make this four bars now. All right, not only does it make it four bars, but if we go back to our drum track, it doubles that drum track up. So we'll be able to hear drums throughout the whole sequence. So let's go back to keys. Now let's listen to it. All right, that gives us a little more playroom, right? All right, now I'm going to actually use my cue link to zoom back out again so we can see the entire sequence here. And then I'm just gonna keep it very simple. Now you notice when I push a pad while using pad perform, I get that chord, okay? And you basically just play around with the chords, find something you like, pick numbers out of the hat, whatever you wanna do. Let's keep it simple. I'm just gonna use this first pad, kind of this second pad up here, and then add that at the end of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Overdub, and then I'm gonna hit space bar. All right, so now we can listen back to it. Now, if you look over here, you can actually find your notes. All right, so these are the MIDI events up here. And you have a zoom over here as well. So Now, I think the timing might have been a little off. I think I want to pull the timing. I think I want to change the timing a little bit. So I'm going to select these three notes and I'm going to use this little thing right here. So if I 
left click, I can actually select these nodes. And you can see there's this white line around these events, which are the notes. And then we can actually use this weird looking tool here to bring it back. And then we can do it again for this. Okay, let's see if this maybe sounds better. I'm gonna keep changing it until I find what I like here. All right, I think that sounds a little better. So since we actually have something in here, I'm gonna to go to menu and I'm gonna to go to right here where it says file. You can actually save the project. Okay, now I created a folder in here. So when you first see this, it's not gonna have a projects folder, but I just went new folder and made a projects folder and then went into that projects folder. All right, and we can save this. So I'm going to make it NPC beats. This is the second you know, project I worked on, so I'm gonna put two. All right, and if you push enter, it's gonna save it, or you can click save. If you're finding value in this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Don't give it two thumbs up, just give it one thumbs up and do that below. I really appreciate you for doing that. It's gonna help this video get seen by other people who want to see this information. Appreciate you. All right, so now we do have a sequence, but I do wanna show you this. If you click right here where there's four squares, it's gonna take you over to program edit. Now when you're in program edit, you're gonna be able to see what we're actually playing. So this is the electric synth, okay? Now there are different presets here that you can change, but before we mess with the presets, I just wanna move on to the synth pad. So now we're here. This is actually called tube synth, all right? And you can see all the different parameters that we have. So this is called tube synth, okay? You got these two main oscillators here and you have a sub oscillator which generate the sounds for the synth and you got all these different controls let's not get into this too much right now but i did want to show you that's what it looks like let's go back to main all right and again if you look here we're going to use pad perform that's what it sounds like so i'm pushing this first pad pad a01 and that's one thing i want to show you right here it says a01 a02, A03, A04. Now up here, you can see where it says A. That's what bank we're in. There are actually eight different banks, okay? But right now we only get access to three of them because of the particular type of program we're in. But right now we're in bank A. So right down here, it's gonna say A01. All right, let's listen to it. All right, so, you know, we could just keep it simple, keep it a couple chords. We can actually change the octave of it as well. Now keep in mind, I'm keeping the root note the same and the scale the same. And I'm just gonna change the octave maybe a little higher, you know, experiment. All right, maybe we didn't like that. Let's try an octave lower, which is actually gonna be at two. So we're an octave lower from the original octave. All right, and if you haven't figured out by now, the octave number changes the actual pitch. So the lower the octave number, the lower the pitch, the higher the octave number, the higher the pitch. I think that sounds fine. So I'm going to actually click overdub right there and then hit space bar and then start recording the pads. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar and record onto the pads. Get the count in. Sounding pretty good. Take overdub off. All right, push spacebar to stop it. So that sounds pretty good. Let's go to track four. 
So track four is bass. Let's go over to program edit. This is the baseline synthesizer. All right. This comes built into the MPC Beats software. We got this one. So I'm going to do something different now with the pad perform. Let's go back to main right here where it says pad perform. I'm going to change the type from chords to notes. So what I did is I took pad perform off of chords where it's playing three notes at once or it's playing more than one note at once. And I changed it to where it's only going to play one note at once. This particular synth is a mono synth, so it's only going to play one note at a time. So there's no point of picking chords because it's not going to play three notes. So we're going to go ahead and play one note at a time. All right, so that's what it sounds like. So I want to hit space bar and kind of listen to it. It doesn't sound too bad, right? But let's change the octave down and just, you know, see what that sounds like. Now, a lot of making music is experimenting. So you don't know what it's going to sound like until you actually try it. So let's go ahead and try it. Okay. Adds a little more thickness to it. Now you don't have to conform to the same notes and everything like that. I'm just keeping it really simple. And since this is a bass line, we can kind of make it groovy if we want to. Like we could play other notes, right? You know, we could do different things. I'm just going to improvise something. I'm going to hit overdub and then I'm just going to go into it by pushing the space bar. All right. I think that sounded pretty good. I'm going to take overdub off. So I'm going to hit this square, which is stop. And I think that's a good spot to actually save the project. I like to save often. It's just a habit. I think it's a good habit to get into. You never know, you know, when the power is going to go off or something's going to happen, right? So at this point, I think we got a pretty decent sounding sequence. Now we can add more tracks to this. We don't have to, you know, conform to the template. We can improvise the template. <laughs> So I'm going to go to a fifth track and I'm going to push this plus icon. So when I push that, it's going to add a new program. And you can see right there, plugin 004 is a new program, which is a plugin program. Now, right here, it is the tube synth program and it's the preset is default. So let's hear that. All right, that's what it sounds like, but I think the octave is too low. So I want to change it maybe to octave four. All right, and then right off the bat, I'm just going to turn the volume down. All right, I'm going to use my encoder here just to turn it down. All right, so we got a lead. I'm going to improvise a simple lead like that. So I'm going to press overdub and then play start just to program that in there. Let's go ahead and do it. Two, three, four. There we go. Take overdub off. All right, and we don't have to use that preset. We could change the preset. So if you look right here, there are different presets. You can hit this arrow to go to the next one, right? Now you can see I'm changing the presets as it's playing.
That's interesting, right? You can always come back to a preset. So now if you click where the preset name is, you can actually look at the presets and you got different categories. So we got synth, lead, pluck, pad, bass, organ, effects, etc. But let's go ahead and maybe pick a lead, hard seek. Maybe. Simple, uh, simple square, I mean, sounds pretty neutral, a little mellow, I like it. Simple. Uh, let's try to put the sin to the reverb. All right, I wanna click where it says sin. It doesn't actually say sin, but. All right, so what I did there, let's take you back. I turned up the send, so it's gonna send this sound to the return right here. You can see this return has this air reverb on it, so I clicked right there, okay? And then it brought up the effect, and then I simply just increased the room size to kind of give it more of a dramatic reverb, and let's listen to it. to turn off the effect by pressing this power button so that's what it sounded like before turn it on all right so there you go that's how you can add effects i think we got a pretty decent beat going on right now i think this is a good place just to go ahead and you know save our progress i right, said so there's one more thing i want to show you you know just for this first tutorial here right here's our channel mixer so we can actually change the different volume levels right here so each one of these lines right here is called a fader we can change our volume it sounds pretty decent right this is just a rough mix to kind of make it sound a little bit more pleasant because uh sometimes some sounds can get louder than the others all right so i just wanted to show you the mixer i'm not trying to give a big mixing tutorial i just wanted to show you okay this is where you can change the levels and you can see all the different levels all at once all right you could do that right there all right so this is the channel mixer mode so this software is deep if you're just starting there's a lot to take in. So if you need to go ahead and rewatch some of the sections in this video, you know, ask questions below. If I get enough of the same questions, I'll make a video about it. So go ahead and ask the questions. All right. And hey, I think this is a great piece of software. If you want to get into the MPC workflow, this software is very capable and we've only scratched the surface, okay? So this is just one of the templates. And it's only showing a little bit of what you can actually do with this software. So be sure to ask your questions below, okay? So I will have more videos about the MPC Beats software. Click or tap the screen over here to take you to the playlist that's going to contain those videos. Subscribe right here. My name is Matthew. Hey, let's continue creating music. I appreciate you guys for watching. We'll talk soon.